Okay, this is our first program of 15 minutes of fame. Wow. Featuring our first guest, Mike Auger. How you doing, Mike? I'm fine, thanks, Del. Well, I'll just give you the first question right off the top. Sure. Uh, Briefly, how did you end up here at Webster Cablevision? How'd you get here? Wow. You're going to ask a, a, a short question. <laughs> a long and winding road. I have a long answer to yeah. it. Uh, I was working all my life. I loved television. I was a TV nut when I was in school. When I went to high school, I was on the TV crew, produced everything, did basketball games, uh, produced the morning show, did the afternoon announcements. Um, I, I did just about everything in broadcasting that you could do in school. My plan was to go to college to make some money. I started to work in industry at Stromberg Carlson and it was only going to be for a year or two so I made some money to go to college. It ended up being 15 years and I was approaching what my college professor called the golden handcuffs. I was making so much money that I really didn't want to leave my job but I was yeah I wasn't happy in my job. Right. So is this still at Stromberg? Still at Stromberg, yep. Okay. And about the mid 80s um, I decided to go back to school and get a communications degree. While I was doing that, um, in the early 80s in, in Webster here, we, a Cablevision came in. It was American Cablevision of Webster. Yeah. And when I heard that they had a thing called community programming, access public, public access programming, where you could come in, learn how to use the equipment, and produce your own programs, I thought, boy, for a guy like me who loves television, right. this is like getting the keys to the cookie jar. Yeah. So uh, I, I came in, took all the classes they had, was going to college to get a communications degree, and started doing basketball games on weekends as a play-by-play announcer. Nice. And as an internship for my college program, I came and worked on a weekend. You know, I'd, I'd start doing Saturdays or Sundays here at the station. And about the time the internship ended, there were some changes in how public communications was funded here. Yeah. Cablevision right. stopped funding it and the town had picked it up. Uh huh. And they were looking for somebody to work part time weekends. I was in the right place at the right time. Wow. Now when Cablevision pulled out of here as far as their staff goes and moved them all downtown, the town put me on full time to run the Webster studio. So I contracted for about five or six years doing that full time. Uh, and then we became a department of the town in 1992, and I was named the department head. So it's wow. it's just kind of like been a series of accidents with me in the right place <laughs> at the right time. That's great. It's kind of like a, you know, just a following your dream and just kind of going with it. And I got it. to do what I always wanted to do, and it ended up being, you know, later in life, uh, after I'd been married and had three kids and worked a yeah. bunch of jobs. Uh, wow. But it's worked out great. Amazing. Um, I wanted to know about this one myself. Is how many local sketch shows have you been involved with? Because I know there was our show, the Frontal Lobe and Dumpling Show, but there was also a couple other ones, The Greatest Show on Earth. I we think had was The called. Greatest Show on Earth was uh, actually the second one. The first one was called The Paul Show. Okay. And the reason it was called The Paul Show is because the, the main producer and two of the stars were named Paul. So yeah. So there were a lot of Pauls running around here. Um, and, and so that was the first sketch show, and I did a few little bits with them, nothing very drastic. And then The Greatest Show on Earth was kind of a spin off. From that, how long did that run? It ran a couple of years on on Saturdays and uh, eleven o'clock on Saturday nights. What happened to the guys that were running it? Are they they've, still they've moved or? on. Well, one of them is working animation for Disney in Texas. Really? Yeah. Wow. And uh, uh, the others have just kind of spread out, and I don't think any of them are in broadcasting anymore. Yeah. Is that, but yeah, yeah, went they for moved the on. Family yeah. thing or stuff like that. Yep. Um, I noticed you've collected quite a number of old TV shows and movies. Any stand out as favorites of the ones you've collected or stuff you, any, you're looking for that any, you want to find? Anybody that knows me <laughs> knows that Jack Benny is my all-time favorite. Um, oh, yeah. And I have a, a whole bunch of his shows, both radio and television. Um, I'm always looking for more because it's hard to find all of them because he did them on film, he did them live. Uh, but... He's one of my favorite, but I, I oh, like yeah. almost all things old TV. You, you do a pretty mean J- Jack Benny imitation. Well, well, thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I love that. It's great. If your name was Don, I could say, oh, oh. Don. But it's, uh... <laughs> I, I love your invitation of them. It's pretty good. Um, have you ever had any brushes with well-known people coming through uh, Webster and uh, time that you've been around here? I've interviewed a few. Um, I've bumped into a few. Um, most of the time, it was sports people. Yeah. We used to, the Lions Club did a, an annual sports dinner here for years that we would always televise. And they always had top line athletes here. So I got to interview uh, Larry Zonka and Bob Lanier. Nice. And Harmon Killebrew and uh, <laughs> uh, George Shivalo, who fought Muhammad Ali twice, and wow. Joe Frazier. And, um, so I got to meet you know several of those. Was it true like a remote circumstance or they came into the studio? No, they no no, it was in the remote. It was it was at the dinner. We would televise the dinner. But, oh, okay. But before right. the dinner would go on, I would do interviews with with these guys just so we yeah, have like them. Yeah, a sports banquet right. or something mm -hmm. like that. It was like a big sports banquet. That's exactly what it was. And uh, then we covered the LPGA yeah. tournament here for years when nobody else wanted to televise it. It was before the wow. golf channel. It was before ESPN started showing women's golf. Nobody was really interested in women's golf. But women's golf was but, in Rochester. But it was in Rochester since the since, 70s. Yeah, the 70s, right. And um, I started working freelancing doing that tournament in the early 80s. Uh, so we, that that's another thing. We've, I, I've gotten to know Nancy Lopez and uh, Patty Sheehan and a lot yeah, of the Hall of Fame golfers. Yep. Right. Kind of the female version of uh, Arnold Palmer. <laughs> you know, Exactly. <laughs> that's great. Um, let's see. What was the most um, most watched or most interesting topic on like the Webster meetings, like the board meetings that you cover? Was there something that stood out, you know, that was controversial? That that's, people that's, that's a tough question. I one of the things that jumps out at me first when you said that was the big debate they had over the Wegmans store on Holt Road. Oh yes, um, or, on where the Wegmans is on Holt Road was a big field. And there was one, maybe two houses in that whole area. But there was a big controversy from all the neighbors that lived off of Holt Road um, and neighbors on the ridge that were nearby who said that it's going to increase traffic. We don't want it. Oh, yeah. Um, it's sort of like the Wegmans are putting it on East Avenue. Too, it, it, same. It's the same kind of a fight that they had, they're yeah. having now, we had back then. Um, Wegmans prevailed, and I think... By and large, they won the people over. Um, I haven't seen, you know, the traffic on Ridge Road here in Webster is terrible, but it has been for years. Yeah. And you can't pin it on just Wegmans. Right, because so, there's so many things in Webster that... I think know. a lot of the people that come to Wegmans on Holt Road to shop, come on the expressway, get off at the Holt Road exit, go to Wegmans, and get back on the expressway <laughs> and, and go wherever they're going. So right. I don't think that that's... I think, by and large, most of the people who fought that aren't upset that it's here now. Yeah. They've been turned around on their um, thoughts on that. Uh, let's see what we got here. Um, how would you, um, well, this is more of a te technical question. How would you describe your show producer techniques on shows that you've worked on here? I mean, do you have, like, a certain style or certain thing that, things that you do personally? For the things that I direct here, there's, there's, a, there's a few things that I still direct here. Um, I'm a pretty simplistic direct director. I'm not big yeah. into the the crazy uh, um, cutting from camera to camera. Right, two camera you, shots. Yeah, and things, I, yeah. I, two cameras are fine, but I don't go in for a lot of uh, special effect transitions or anything like that. Uh -huh. I'm pretty much a, a quick fade from one camera to another guy, uh, dissolve, 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 or, or cut uh, back and forth between the cameras. I'm not. Uh, I don't go in for the special effects that a lot of people do. I know on on your show on front of yeah, and dump on occasion we use the green we use the green screen most of the time right but uh, that's you know a pretty basic kind of I a, think yeah most comedies of this level they use the green screen um, for anything and, and, you know and, it's like it's part of the imagination you sure kind of put and, it up there and, and, and you guys don't use it to be realistic I mean you don't want right. you, people aren't yeah. going to look at it and say oh look they're really in the bus depot you're gonna you're gonna have a a, a shot of the bus depot. But it's yeah. done in a comedy context, so right. that they so know where the sketch is supposed to be taking place. I always thought it, like, it, it borders on that imaginative exactly. kind of, because I know a lot of kids like our show. You know, yep. it's, not because it's a children's show, but because it, it has that imaginative feel to it, sure. you know, where they kind of connect with the 
They get the idea. You're not trying to make it look like you're really there. You're trying to have Yeah, we're the not going to spend all this you're, money. You're just having the audience. Like, you want the audience to know where you're supposed to be. Right, so exactly. So you put the graphic up. Yeah, sure. that makes sense. Um, if you were to choose another field of work, what what type of work would that be? If you uh, had, like, to redo it again, you know. Pro golfer? No, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> uh, or a baseball I, player? Like I, uh, I'm doing what I always wanted to do. I mean, yeah. and, it, and it took me... Uh, 16 or 17 years from the time I started working before I even got involved at all in it. So I'm very, very happy doing right. what I'm doing, uh, and I'll be happy to do that until I decide to retire, and my occupation is going to be relax. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um, in fact, I was just going to ask you about future plans for Webster Cable or yourself. I mean, do you have anything in back of your mind? Well, one of the things that I said a couple of years ago before I retired uh, was that I wanted to have the station converted completely to digital because oh, yeah. in, in a uh, a station like ours that's funded with town funds, mm -hmm. budgets are always a consideration. We we cannot afford the top of the line technical equipment that, for example, the commercial stations go. Oh yeah. Um, I can tell you that my we need a new curtain. By yeah, the way. <laughs> a new curtain is is in the works. Yeah. Uh, but. My entire budget for a year for equipment is about the same as Channel 10 spends on one of their studio tripods. So that Amazing. just gives you an idea of, of and I've had, yeah, really, like I've penny had pinching people come, thing. Rich Funky and some others have, have come up to me and say, well, we're really amazed that you guys can put on as good a picture and as good a quality as you do with... The, the amount of money you have to work with. And I always, oh, that's yeah. one of the best compliments that anybody could, could, could pay this, the channel. Yeah, that's nice to hear that. You know, it gets your feedback. Um, let's see, have you, have you yourself interviewed others? Have you interviewed people? I did. I did a show here for the first three or four years after I started working full time, a show called Webster This Week, where we would have uh, people in to do an interview and a call in segment. Um, we had topics of the day. We had uh, the emergency preparedness coordinator from Monroe County here. Mm -hmm. We had people from rg &E here talking about uh, uh, how to save money during the winter months with your heat. We had antique experts here talking about bringing in antiques to show. Wow, uh, we, we did a wide variety of topics uh, and we used to do that. We did that every week for the first three or what four years. What years did that run? Actually? It was uh, about... 87 to 92, maybe, something oh, like okay. that. Okay, had a pretty good run. It's it like five, six run. years. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Um, I, I always have to ask this to friends of mine and people I interview. What is your favorite food? My favorite food? Cheeseburger. <laughs> That's an easy one. I, I, Which place would you buy it from? Like, is there a favorite Lo restaurant? Local? Or, yeah. Cheeseburger. Local. Hey. Like a Vic and Nerves or yeah, well, yeah. Tom <laughs> Walls was always my favorite. They moved out of Webster now, so I, I it, it, it's going to come down to Bill Gray's or Charlie's, I suspect. Uh, <laughs> in, in Myrtle Beach, the place is Hamburger Joe's. So yeah, yeah I'll Hamburger Joe's sounds the good. Plugs since they're not <laughs> they're not around, <laughs> right? You don't have to worry about copyright on that one. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any other hobbies, or do you collect anything else other than movies? Money. No, 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 no. Money. <laughs> okay, Jack. I wish. I wish. Yeah, I wish I could collect money. Uh, no. Um, no. I, I watch. I like to watch sports on TV and play golf and play racquetball and uh, ride bikes and. Do so you have a lot of golf clubs? I mean, you collect golf, I, I golf have clubs. A, no, I don't collect them. I, I, have, I have a set. Yeah. And when they wear out, I, or when I start playing lousy with them, I get another set. <laughs> <laughs> I know you and John, uh, a member of Frontal Lobe, uh, talk about baseball all the time. Yeah, we're both Yankee fans. So between takes, we're usually running up to check on the score in the game uh, on the Tuesday nights when you guys are in here taping. Have you gone out to see the Yankees? I've been to see them in Toronto. Never been to Yankee Stadium. Uh, maybe this summer. Okay. We talked about it several times. And we can go with John or something. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> all right, but I think, uh, is that about 15 minutes? I, I would say, say that's pretty close. So. All right, we'll see how that ran and uh, see if we recorded the whole thing. Very good. Thanks a lot, Mike. You bet. Thank you. <laughs> we got to shake out it. Even though nobody can see it. This is radio. You can't see <laughs> it's it. It's radio. Okay, Jack. <laughs>